Hello. Hello. Today we are going to be talking about, as you can see on the title and description of the YouTube video, we're going to talk about how to get a hundred thousand Instagram followers. So without sounding all commercial and cringy, I am going to try to explain this as down to earth as possible. So my daughter, Maddie Mae Crafts has 130,000 followers. Yes. And she grew literally like overnight. It was so fast, so quick. And at one point you were growing 15,000 to 20,000 followers a day. Yeah. So I would say you started out and reached your first 1,000 followers in 10 months. Yes. And then the second, let's see here. So it took her 10 months to gain about 1,000 followers, a little over 1,000. And then didn't it take you like a month to get 10? No. How long did it take you to get 10? Oh, wait, yes, that's right. It did take me a month. Okay, so it took her a month to get 10 followers, and then it took her 10 months to get 1,000 followers. So you probably want to know how can I get 100,000 followers too. So in about two and a half weeks span-ish, she got 100,000 followers. It was crazy. And we couldn't keep up. Like we were trying to celebrate 10,000, we were trying to celebrate 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, 50,000, and it just kept growing, growing, growing. And at one point she had, I think it was like almost 30,000 followers within 24 hours. So we're going to give you some tips and tricks on how to grow your fan base really big, really fast. And I'm sure you probably are wondering um, why I don't have 100,000 followers, which is a great question. I am on Instagram and my handle is at Lavender Fiber Co. And I have a yarn dyeing company. I make hand dyed yarns. And so I'm not doing what she's doing and we'll kind of explain all of that as well. Um, also to a little disclaimer before you get into this video, the nitty gritty, is mainly that it isn't an overnight thing. Um, I mean, even though it kind of was for her, but it does take a lot of work. So one thing that people don't understand, they're like, oh, she's a social media star. She has lots of followers on Instagram. She has a lot of followers on YouTube, TikTok, whatever the case is. But when it comes to actually maintaining these social media accounts, it is a full-time job. And a lot of people don't realize how much work goes into it. And I have watched a ton of videos on how to grow your YouTube channel, how to grow Instagram, how to grow TikTok. And a lot of them are very similar in how to go about reaching the coveted algorithm. So... When it comes to Instagram, it's a lot easier growing your fan base on Instagram than it is on YouTube. So if you are more comfortable not making videos, I would say Instagram is definitely the way to go. And if you are very comfortable in front of the camera, I would say YouTube would probably be the way to go. That or TikTok. But going back a little bit, TikTok is a platform where you see nothing but really short videos. And a lot of the other social media channels have adapted that as well, aka reels, short stories, on and on. So a lot of people are still making Instagram posts, and that is a big thing. Instagram posts are okay, and they'll get some eyes, and they'll get some hits, but the biggest thing is Instagram reels. And so one of the videos I think that blew up the first for you was the uh the blanket one yes and so talk about that one so in that one it was very early in the morning and the golden hour was out so i decided to film myself holding all my yarn and making a blanket so i did do that and when i posted it later that night and i just went to sleep and then when i woke up the next day it had a lot of views <laughs> more than i'm used to and it was just really surreal to like believe that because I thought even just a thousand was a lot. Yeah, you did. I remember, what was it? Was it your first 
How many views did your reels get in the very beginning? Like when you first started getting some views? I remember the first reel I posted was, I think it got actually 3,000. Okay. It now has much more, but... Right, because remember, you've been getting a lot more followers. <laughs> yep. So a big thing is when it comes to a lot of the platforms on Instagram and other platforms like YouTube and or TikTok, you are building a relationship with these people. So basically you're following them, you're following their life, you're getting to know them. And it's almost like very short segments of a reality show basically is what it is. So some of the things that you do do on your channel are Amigurami's. Yes. And that is her niche. So basically what a niche is, just in case you don't know what a niche is, is basically your expertise on what your channel is about. So whenever you're doing something on YouTube, it's a little more forgiving with YouTube. And the reason I'm talking a lot about YouTube is because I have a YouTube channel and I've been making YouTube videos for 14 years, since 2008. And so I'm one of kind of the OGs that did YouTube for a long time. It has evolved tremendously since the dawn of day since back in my day I used to do YouTube videos so when YouTube was first popular it was popular because you were subscribing to your favorite video vloggers and back then when you would make a video a lot of people would subscribe to your channel because they wanted to see you more often now when I first started making YouTube videos I had nothing else to do so I decided to make like three uploads a day, um, at least one upload a day, and sometimes even five a day. I was just bored. So I got really big really fast because YouTube would kind of just getting popular. And with Instagram, people are like, oh, you don't have to post every day. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do that. Um, yeah, you do. Like, But it's not like you have to post a, uh, a post on your actual thing, on your... Um, page is that what it's called yes on your page you don't have to post a picture on your page every day actually what you want to do is make reels more frequently because instagram is grabbing up your reels before they're grabbing up your post if that makes sense and if you're going to do a post make sure it's a carousel post because if you don't then that's less time that people are spending on your channel. And now if you don't know what carousel means, because I didn't know what it meant, it means having multiple photos within one post. So at least have, I think you have up to 10. So a good yes. number is eight to 10. And people are just sliding, sliding, sliding. It's like a real life flip book. And so if you do that, it causes people to stay on your channel, on your Instagram page longer and channels YouTube. And so what that does is it tells Instagram that people are on your page and they're paying attention to you, which then sparks interest in Instagram and makes them want to expose you and advertise for you more frequently. So some of the reels that she has made have gone viral. And my definition of viral is anything above, I would say what, 500,000 and above, would you yes. say? Is probably considered viral for Instagram. The next video that went viral and is one of your most viewed, I would say it's at 4 million now? Yes. Is her teddy bear. You want to show them your teddy bear? Yes, so it's the one where I made two teddy bears and there were two custom orders and this is actually one of the bears for another one. It actually made these bears very popular and most of my followers actually probably now know me as the person who makes these teddy bears. <laughs> so it actually went like, it got a lot of views very quickly when I made these bears, and... Did you get requests, personal requests, for people to want to buy them? I did, which was really crazy for me because I rarely ever get custom orders. <laughs> or I used to, anyways. I used to never get any. Well, talk about your first custom order that you ever had. Oh, yeah, my first custom order. It was a Roblox character. And I actually, they didn't even message me about it. So my friend Spark Cloud, she, she um, got the custom order to do it, but she wasn't able to. So she posted it to her story and I saw it. So I thought I could do it too. So I made it and then that was my first custom order. 
Yeah, and then you got another custom order short after yep. that. And it was, I think it was like her friend. And they requested for a character too that was in like the same shape of the doll. Except yeah, it, it was, was, was it Elden Ring? Elden Ring, yep. Yeah, and it was a character from Elden Ring. It and was it was the Melina. Witch? Melinda? Mel yeah. Um, and <laughs> I don't pronounce the name. Yeah, so we don't really know a lot about these characters, but no. uh, my daughter can basically make anything. So she got really famous from making these bears, and so this bear right here is a pattern from Amy. Yep, What's all about Amy. All about Amy. And so she came out with this pattern, and in my opinion, I know I'm just her mother and everything, but um, I've seen people try to replicate this bear, and I'm here to tell you that my daughter does it the best. She does some kind of a special stitch that I can't even comprehend, but it gives it this beautiful, is it like a V? Is that what you call no. it? No. What do you call it's this? It's an X. An X. It's a beautiful little X, and it kind of reminds me of a waffle print, but it's really really intricate unique and detailed and the bear is giant so uh, it's yeah. 16 inches tall surprisingly we've had a overwhelming response to these bears and so she has been making bears until bears have come been coming out of her ears and then this is a dress that she came out with a pattern for and she knitted as well with my yarn from my yarn company <laughs> and this is called hanbok and it's one of her favorite this was actually created because of her she was obsessed with one of my yarn colors and wanted me to make this color for her but this is when i first started yarn dyeing and i didn't know how to replicate my yarn and sometimes i still feel like i struggle a little bit replicating my yarn apparently it's very hard to copy your own yarn and so this was a yarn that i made for her and so this is one of her favorite and so it's called hanbok which if you don't know hanbok is a very fancy dress that is worn in korea for special occasions and it also represents the freedom that koreans had so it's very special and dear and so this is um this is now available with a shirt because we also had a custom order request for a teddy bear for a baby boy and she wanted a hand knitted shirt so that's also available as well as of right now the shop isn't quite open because we did sell a lot of custom orders but we're hoping to open it again i'll make sure to leave her website down below which is maddie at, you know dot com so it's really maddie com. so it's really easy to remember um show them the other stuff that you did make so i also made this sheep and i used premier parfait chunky yarn in white and then this cream color and this dark brown and the pattern is by crafting and glory on instagram and it's actually like it turned out really cute cuter than i expected it to be and i just love it so much and it's so soft and fluffy too and then i also have this which is gail from animal crossing i actually free handed this one yeah isn't that crazy like, guys a while ago <laughs> She's only 13. How old were you when you freehanded that? Were you like 12? I was still 12. <laughs> yeah, she's been crocheting only for a year, and she's already able to freehand stuff. And she also freehanded a couple of patterns, which she's about to show you guys as well. Yep. This was actually my first pattern that I made. And if you're wondering, it's a little puffed out here in like at the white part, or like the label of it, because I used a different yarn weight. I don't really know why, but... It still turned out really cute, and the pattern is available on my Rubler, and it's just turned out so cute, and I just love it so much. And that was your first pattern that you ever created. Yep. And the list removable. So you can store stuff in it as well. I actually have all my swatches in here. And you did a pattern test too to see if anyone else could replicate it, and they made different kinds of yep. fruits too. Didn't they do like a blueberry and a peach? Yeah, and then a pineapple one, a lemon one. They made so many different kinds. That's so cute. I know. And, and then, then that's your most recent pattern test, right? This one, yep. This one is my most recent one, which is Hello Kitty. From the Sanrio collection. Yep. And this pattern is actually for free, and you can find it at my Instagram. And, wait. Is it Ribbler? I think I posted on my, yes, I did. I posted on my Ribbler. We'll have all those links down below as well if yep. you guys want to check it out. So basically, if you can see, my daughter's niche 
in a nutshell, you can tell, is making emigramis and crocheting patterns. So basically, when you have a niche that is so narrowed down, and what that means, basically, think of it about like it's kind of like an education. So when you get an education, you go to high school and you graduate high school, right? You don't know what you want to become, so then you go off and you go get a college degree. So then you go sign up for college and you get a bachelor's degree in something, either in business or in psychology or education or nursing or whatever the case is, but it's very kind of broad-ish per se. So then once you get your four-year degree, then you go off to what's called grad school. Grad school is more of a concentrated uh, two-year program usually on average and you are going to go into your niche more so than you did with your four years so for example if you are majoring in psychology which I majored in psychology and you go to grad school you're going to either choose industrial organization psychology which is kind of dealing with a lot of companies and their morale and their psychology behind that or you can go into counseling therapy psychotherapy and open up your own clinic usually with a psych degree you do have to further your education in order to do your own practice and what have you and then you have what's called your doctorate which is even more of a in tune niche so if you go into like a doctorate for psychology you're going to basically go into becoming a psychiatrist or something even more elevated and more concentrated whether it's like rehabilitation whether it's like group therapy and it just you go smaller and smaller into a prone uh, niche. My foot is like falling asleep. I think it's because I'm old. I'm gonna have to stretch. We're sitting on the floor because the last time we made this video was on a table and I felt like we were so far away from our audience it wasn't even funny. But the really funny thing is is the camera's almost the same amount of distance away from us than it was before but it's a little bit closer so I'm hoping that helps. Um, excuse my foot falling asleep. Anyway, I'm not used to sitting on the ground. It's been a while since I did that. I was, I would say I'd, I was in my early 20s the last time I recorded sitting on the ground. Um, anyway, what was I talking about? I'm old. I forgot. <laughs> we were talking about niche. Niches. Thank you. Glad somebody's paying attention to me. Um, so niche. So my daughter has a very into niche. Okay, so I she is a knitter. Too. See? Okay, great. So that makes me feel better. So okay, I'm not yeah. old. Something. We're just sitting wrong. Maybe that's what it is. Or we're not used to sitting on the ground. Probably. We're so bougie. We just sit in chairs all day. I wow. Know. It like feels like a thousand needles in my foot. So... Anyway, when it comes to a niche, you can tell that my daughter is a crocheter. She's also a knitter as well in the art community, arts and fiber community, fiber arts community. And so you have crocheting and you have knitting, but then she picks crocheting, so that's a smaller niche. And then after you do crocheting, you can crochet apparel, you can crochet a blanket, a scarf, and amigurumis. And I will tell you that I am a hardcore knitter, and I... I am at heart a crocheter, but I have never made an emirami ever. Like, no, mm -mm. I'm not about that life. Like, I don't collect them. I don't need them. It's sad because we have two little toddlers and probably I should know. make them for them. But my daughters have made plenty of emigramis for them. So the niche has been even more narrow. So the fact that she's making emigrami bears so then she's making amigurami animals and then the niche got smaller to amigurami bears and bunnies um so that is how small that niche is so basically you go from like the widest part of a pyramid and then you go all the way up to the tip top so once you find your actual niche niche like the most narrowest niche in the world which is what you should do when you do instagram and that's all also how you can get brand deals as well and that that way they know how to reach you what you're interested in what not because if they don't know what your niche is and if you don't know what your niche is then companies are going to have a hard time working with you and figuring out what it is that you're trying to advertise and what you're about and also too they want to know if your target audience is good for their target audience so that's for another video if you guys are interested but the main reason takeaway here is that she made a lot of viewers because of the fact that her niche was so narrow and now like I think her inbox is just like blowing up every day for custom orders which we will open yeah. up soon and we're trying to open it up internationally I'm just still trying to figure out all that stuff because we are kind of new when it comes to that um but we've had a lot of great luck just kind of taking orders through DM, but we did open up a website for her because it was starting to get a little overwhelming trying to keep up with all the DMs, even though we we're still able to do it. Um, but also, too, we are trying to um, 
make sure she's not too stressed out. So I try to make sure that the reward work ratio is pretty balanced for the most part. And then also too, she decided to apply for a couple test nits on top of that. <laughs> and uh, thank goodness she's homeschooled, but she's a very ambitious 13 year old. Definitely way more ambitious than I was when I was 13 because all I did was play video games and talk on the phone. So with that said, I hope this video helps on how to reach 100,000 followers. And I will also make another video on how to kind of grow your channel, um, not channel, your, your Instagram page, because I think that'll help a lot as well. Um, other than that, if you guys have any other questions, comments, or concerns, leave them down below and we'll try to answer them as soon as we can. All the links that I mentioned will be included down at the bottom as well. And thanks for watching. Do you have anything else that you might want to add? Ooh, these earrings are actually by Warm Clay Co. And they're the Granny Square Arches. And they're so cute. I can't stop wearing them. Are those your favorite out of all the three? I would say so. I don't know, though, because I love them all I so much. I like the much. oranges. I think the oranges are definitely my favorite. I don't know. I can't decide between these or like the daisies, but yeah. I also love the oranges. So it just really depends on what I'm wearing. So other than that, thank you so much for following us and thank you so much for joining us on this adventure. Um, it has not been easy and we'll definitely make a video on kind of like a day in our life if you guys are interested. Actually, put that down in the comments below if you guys are interested to know what a day in our life video looks like because it is like it's calm in some areas, kind of hectic in others, but I am a planner. So I always try to make sure that whatever I'm doing for that day is planned for so that way it's not as chaotic. I like things to be as smooth as possible. So if you guys are interested in that, leave that below too and let me know. Other than that, thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.